Hello, everyone. We have this aptitude exam, <clears throat> uh, which is uh, meant to be used for selecting students for scholarship purpose. And we want to quickly record at least four to five questions to give you a brief understanding on how the questions would be in the exam that you're going to take. This would certainly help you all prepare well, practice a lot of questions on these lines and then appear for the exam. Thank you so much and I'm sure you're going to do a great job. So here's the first question. If eight men can do a piece of work in 10 days, how long will it take for four men to do the same work? So you have to step by step try to solve this. So if eight men, okay, sorry about that. If eight men can do a piece of work in 10 days, then you get 80. Okay, that is number of men multiplied by number of days. Let me put it here. Number of men multiplied with number of days. Going by the same logic, if you have four men, number of men would be four multiplied by number of days is not known to us would be equivalent to 80. Correct? So that's something that uh, is known. They do a piece of work. Okay, that piece of work is 80. Whatever be 80 units. Now, if I take D, D would be 80 by 4, which implies D equal to 20. This is how you solve the question. This is a simple, uh, you know, aptitude question, which might appear on your exam. This is how majority of the questions would be. Now let's look at the second aptitude question. And the question is, what is the next number in the series? You have two, five, 10, 17, so on and so forth. To answer these kind of questions, it won't be straightforward because two plus five is not 10. 2 plus 3 is 5, but 5 plus 3 is not 10 once again. Right? To solve these kind of things, you need to think beyond. If you have 2, and when you look at the odd numbers, excluding 1, you'll have 3, 5, 7, 9, so on and so forth. These are all your odd numbers. These are all odd numbers. Okay. If you have two, and if you're going to add three to it, you get five, which is this next number. To this five, if you add this five, you're going to get 10. That's here. To this 10, if you add seven, you get 17. So on and so forth. So 17 plus nine would give you the next number, which happens to be 26. So you have to think slightly beyond because the number, uh, what will be the next number in the series would not be straightforward. It'd be tricky like this. Yeah. So there we go. This is the second sample aptitude question. Questions of this kind would appear on your exam. Third, if employer of two tailors, X and Y, pays them a combined sum of 550 rupees each week. Okay, so first of all, we need to write it one by one. So this is how we need to write. So let me see. X, you know plus y, there are two tailors, tailor x, tailor y. 
they get paid combinedly 550 rupees every week. And how much is Y paid per week? How much is Y paid per week? If X receives 120% of the total amount paid to Y. So X receives 120%. Percentage, if you were to represent a number, how would you write it? Just divide it. And this will be 1.2. If you have a number and if you want to represent that number in percentage terms, for example, if you have a number, if you want to represent that in percentage terms, you multiply it with 100. If you have a number and if you want, if you have a percentage and if you want to represent that in number, you divide it by 100. Anyways, so this is 1.2 times of what Taylor Y gets paid. Okay, now. Just substitute this in this equation. And if you substitute 1.2 times of y in this, you get 1.2 into y. Because obviously this is 1 into y is equal to 550. And this would be 2.2 into y, which is equal to 550 which again implies y is equal to, you'll have to divide 550 divided by 2.2. That's it. And obviously you can make use of your calculator or you can make use of your um, Excel sheet. I would always recommend you guys using Excel sheet, but um, Usually in aptitude, people do not allow you to carry calculator or, you know, your laptop. So you'll have to be well versed with the calculations. Anyways, so you get 250. That's the answer. So how much will Taylor Y get paid per week? 250 rupees. And how much will Taylor X get paid? X is equal to 550 minus Y, which is 250. And then you get 300. This is how you're expected to solve these kind of questions. Let's move on to the next question. And here we go. If the cost of a book is initially reduced by 25%, then probably the book uh, owner or the bookshop owner figures out that, you know what, reducing by 25% wasn't giving them profits. So they subsequently raised the value of the book by 20%. So ultimately, what is the final price change? The final price change is going to be what is a question. So let's solve this. To solve these kind of questions, it is always better if you assume some number. Okay, let's assume that cost of the book is approximately 100. And whenever you're assuming some numbers, ensure that you pick up easy numbers, not difficult numbers. Instead of 100, if I take 121, et cetera, calculations will become complicated, right? So say the cost of the book is 100. This is our assumption. First, the cost of the book was reduced by 25%. What does that mean? What is 25% of 100? So 25% of 100 is nothing but, if you want to represent percentage in number terms, what do you do? 25 by 100. Okay, into obviously 100 because it's of 100 rupees. These to get canceled, you get 25. So 25% of 100 is 25. So you're initially reducing by 25%. So you're reducing the cost of the book by 25. Initial cost was 100. So it'll be 100 minus 25, which is 75. Okay, what next? 
Then subsequently, you have increased the cost of the book by 20%. So after reducing it, the price has become 75 now, the price of the book. Um, it should have been the price of the book rather cost. Yeah, I would say price of the book. Cost is the money that you spend in manufacturing that book. Price is the money that you sell that book for. So there's a difference between cost and price. So I would rather stick by the rules and um, let me call this as price. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have 75. If you raise it by 20%, that will be 20% of 75. And what will be 20% 20 of 75? 20 divided by 100 into 75. When you actually solve it, you get 1 by 5. And if you divide this by 5, you get 15. So 15 rupees will be 20% 20 per, 20 of 75 rupees. Right, or twenty percent of seventy-five rupees will be fifteen rupees. You raised by twenty percent, right? So initial price here was seventy-five. Price of the book, you raised it by twenty percent, which is fifteen. So now the price of the book is ninety. Now the question is, the final price change will be. Initial price was hundred. Now the price is ninety. So the difference is ten. This is a final price change. Final price change will be 10. Okay, if you want to represent this in percentage terms, you can always do that. Okay, so 10%, right? 10 is 10% 10 of 100. So when you look at the initial price, you raise the price by 10%. If you increase it by first 25%, then reduce it by 20%, the final price change would be 10%. Okay, that's how you need to answer. And instead of 100, if you take any number, it will be 10% only at the end of the day. You can try out with various numbers also. You'd get the same answer. Now let's move on to the next question and answer this as well. So if 20 of A equals B, 20% of A equals B, then 20% of B is equivalent to what? This is a question that we need to answer. So the answer to this question is as follows. 20%, if you were to represent that as a number 20 by 100, which will be 0.2, okay? So 20% of A is equivalent to B. So 0.2 of A is equivalent to B. Then 20% of B is equivalent to what is a question. What is 20% of B? 0.2 times of B. And you know that B is equivalent to 0.2 into A. So in the place of B, substitute this part. So you get 0.2 into 0.2 <clears throat> into A. 0.2 into 0.2 will be 0 0.04 into A. This will be the answer. And this is, if, if you want to represent 0 0.04 in percentage terms, multiply it with 100. If you multiply 0 0.04 by 100, you get 4. So 4% 4 of A. This is how you need to answer this question. Thank you so much. Hope you got a gist on what kind of questions will be asked and how you have to go about solving it. Speed is important here. So practice as much as possible. Practice makes you perfect. Thank you so much and all the best for your entrance exam.